hopefully today I'll find out if that junk runs or don't, depending on whether or not I bought a bad engine. My OCD kind of got the better of me with these pieces. Well, fellers, finally got all this mess on. Loose, tight. You guys already watched me uh, build my uh, prototype brackets for this, so when I uh, get a, my parts back from the metal shop, this is what we get. These have all been cut out on one of their uh, cutting tables. That's the swing arms, a bunch more. Now I'm gonna be selling these on eBay, these kits just for these vans. Well, not, not specific just for the van, but uh, anything where you've got a ls where you want your mounts up high here we have my uh prototype y'all watch me make that and then here we have a whole entire stack of same thing but just a reproduction see i've got 10 of those and then we've also got this guy you made me uh you watched me make and then whole stack of 10 more so that's what we do sorry i'm slamming those around probably just blew your ears out but while i'm painting the uh, core support i'm also going to paint these so i'm going to be painting two of these one of these and one of these so basically i've got 11 sets one of them will be uh on my van the other 10 you'll see for sale on ebay soon um, the other part of that equation is getting uh, spacers made um, out of all three of these different spacer sizes only these guys oh, have to find that one only these ones was I able to buy uh, they're the quarter inch spacers all these other ones I had to make so cut them down they're within a probably 64th of an inch of exactly what they need to be and make two of those this one's a 9 16 this is just a prototype. So the kits, I'll have to make a bunch more. And then a longer one. And this is heavy wall, eighth inch uh, wall thickness stuff. And this one is aluminum. This is solid stock aluminum. I think it's a uh, 1.375 diameter. And the reason that I had to make this is because I'm gonna utilize, this is a factory idler pulley assembly for the LS motor. And this is the original bolt that goes with it. You've probably seen these before if you've had a Silverado or whatever. But basically I removed that bolt, uh, put a much longer metric bolt in it, and this spacer here will go there. When we put the thing together, I'll show you how that goes, but basically that spaces that out. And this will be where my new uh, <clears throat> belt will ride for the new air compressor location. So. All this stuff will be included in the kit, with the exception of the idler pulley, because you can reuse the one you're taking off your motor. But anyways, that's the uh, thing I've been waiting on for three weeks to go ahead and complete the engine assembly on the van. Well, hey, ladies and jelly beans. So we finally get back on the old van project uh, after a two to three week hiatus. Um, this is the top header panel that goes above the radiator. This is the top grill surround. Um, what I'm going to do is disassemble this, basically unbolt all these uh, supports, the hood latch assembly, I'm gonna pull the chrome off, and I'm gonna do a real quick uh, sand down, prime, and paint of all of these pieces. All these there. Um, as you've already seen, I painted the uh, firewall, uh, most of the engine bay and uh this right here when you open the hood that's what you're looking at so uh i don't want it to look like crap i also don't want to rattle can it because this is something that you're going to have your arms on maybe laying tools on it you know so it's kind of a high wear item the inner structure the stuff like the back side of uh brackets in the engine bay 
cheap paint will hold up forever, but I'm gonna do actual good quality paint on this. Well, let's get rolling with this. This doesn't have a, anything at all to do with the uh, LS swap other than you gotta take it off. But as you know, I uh, like to improve things if I've already got them taken apart. These are dirty, don't wanna come out. So, I do it. Not trying to spend crazy amount of time on it. Not like doing a full restoration on it, so. But there's no excuse for just not improving things if you can and it don't take that much time. Okay, for whatever reason, those were uh, 12 points. Just for the hood latch piece. Ah, it's new impact. This little ring is tight. Okay, so I'm going to take these off and lay them on the ground in the orientation that they came off. From the factory, these were just oversprayed. I might show you uh, the actual painting portion of this, like when I actually shoot them. But uh, as far as all the sanding and all that, nobody wants to watch that. That's boring. It'll probably not be a uh, surprise to any of my normal uh, subscribers, but my OCD kind of got the better of me with these pieces. Wound up running them all through the sandblaster, cleaning them all up. Especially this latch had so much grit and grime in it that it wouldn't operate smoothly. This piece I did not run through the uh, blaster because it won't fit. So I spent way too long kind of sanding it, trying to get it to look better. That's the top plate for the core support. So when you open the hood, that right there is just in your teeth. So I got it kind of looking quite a bit better. So I'm fixing to prime these. Like I said, these have nothing at all to do with a uh, LS swap. So I'm not gonna record all this. So I might record and actually paint them, but as far as all this, nope. Just wanted to let you know what's going on here. Let's get to it. I already did the other side of these a while ago. Um, I'm danger dangerously close to running out of paint. You can't tell how much you got in these things. I, I know I'm real low, so I guess I'll start with that one, the most critical piece. And uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Knock out the others as I need to. If I can reach this far. Okay, I'm definitely going to run out. I'm going to drag my cord through.
Anyways, this is about LS swapping, not painting. Well, this stuff turned out okay. That's the top panel. Good latch goes there. All the other little pieces. Yeah, my OCD got the better of me. I didn't try to get this stuff to like show quality or anything like that by any means, but it's definitely going to improve the uh, teeth in the front of the band and prevent me from having to tear this all apart later to do the exact same thing, which would be dumb if I already had everything out. Well, this is a uh, real quick drawn to a close. I'm basically down to just a few odds and ends of wiring. I got to cut off a bunch of zip ties, put some permanent clamps on, um, just hook up a bunch of little stuff. Um, I got to install the whole entire air compressor assembly, which uh, I'll be recording that obviously. I'll record that for an installation video for the brackets I'm going to sell, and part of that I'll put on this video. Um, but I think it'd be a good idea, while the failure's got that out of the way, to uh, get in there and snatch the new spark plugs in there. That side ain't going to be much fun. I ain't going to be able to see what I'm doing, but uh, that side will be pretty easy. But I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. and. Uh, Ain't no sense in setting you up to watch because all you'll be seeing is like this and that's not very entertaining, you know. Anyways, I'll pop the plugs in that thing and uh, bring you back and we'll probably go ahead and uh, install the uh, air compressor. So, I got my brackets back for that the other day, got them painted, hanging in the paint booth and I have 10 sets that I'm gonna put on uh, eBay. So, if you fellas are doing this swap, and you're using a truck motor and the truck accessories, you can hit me up and find them. Oh, ow, whew, my knee ain't liking that. Anyways, let me get tools. Well, fellers, finally got all this mess on. I gotta touch up a little spray paint, but that was my last major holdup for really getting this van done. See my little spacer, aluminum spacer, steel spacers. This used to be a uh, idler pulley, you know, with the spring-loaded thingamajigger. Now it's not. This is my air compressor assembly. Loose, tight with lockdown bolts. When you get it where you want it, lock it down, tighten it all up. Pretty simple. My belt hasn't come in yet, but got that dude on, so that's a big win. Still waiting on my new alternator, but big win for Timos. So now I'm down to making cables. Um, I've already made an end for this end of the starter cable. I've got it strung up around the top of the motor. Uh, none of this wiring or anything's routed, you know, in its final location as far as like looking pretty in zip ties and all that. But right now I'm just trying to get a length for my cable. So got it strung out here. Um, I'm probably just going to loop underneath of the, uh, well, maybe I'll go over. Probably just go over. Go over the top of the uh, booster with all the other wires over to this guy. So I'm just gonna string that over there and I'm gonna mark it, give myself an extra couple of inches and then uh, cut off the extra. Then I'll show you how I crimp them. This is a two gauge cable, by the way. Well, sorry, fellers, I got in a hurry and uh, was a bad boy and uh, went ahead and made up my end and forgot to record it in the other end. I haven't decided what connector I'm going to use on the end, but I will show you my fancy tool. This is just some little cheap thing. Um, O'Reilly's ordered it for me. I think it's made by Standard. I'm not sure. Anyways, it's only about 60 bucks, and it's designed to be used in conjunction with these, which are solder or crimp on I do both but you basically just lift this little guy up here basically you do this set that thing in there about halfway down the middle of that barrel stuff the end of your wire in there lay this down in the concrete and just give that thing a big old whack right on the end of it pretty good whack you want to smash it good and tight but then I use uh, just some of this Usually I'll double them up, put two of these shrink wraps 
over the end of it and uh, heat shrink it on. So I'm currently working on another uh, minor distraction from the LS swap, uh, but an extremely important one. Um, when I did the back brakes a few weeks ago, I put all new uh, shoes and everything. Um, I, I bled the fronts because I put a new master cylinder on it. And uh, this uh, brake caliper, I couldn't get the bleeder to open. It was rusted shut or closed, whatever you want to call it. And the other one, I got it to bleed, but neither one of them are uh, grabbing. One's not grabbing at all. Like you just smash the brake pedal all the way to the floor and just spin this tire. The one on the other side, um, you could uh, feel a little resistance, but this is a critical safety component. So I'll show you what I like to buy from uh, rockauto.com. Uh, these special anti-rust coated caliper assemblies. These will not rust and turn into a, basically that six months after you put them on. They're real good quality. I really like them. And they're available for pretty much all the old cars and trucks. They got some kind of a, I don't know if it's powder coating or high temp paint or what it is. But these look good, you know, compared to that. And they'll look like this for years. Come with new bolts. This is the only way to go. And these are cheaper than going to uh, any of your normal local parts stores and buying basically just a sandblasted reman of that. So these look better. You know, you don't have a rust problem like you do with a store one and they're cheaper. So you do have to send back your old one for a core, but these are fantastic. Um, I've got them on lots of the old vehicles that I do and customers as well. So highly recommend them. Rockauto.com specials right here. Well, I'm gonna change these out. I also bought new hoses. So uh, front brake system, back brakes, all be squared away and uh, we can safely roll around. The last brake job, which was done not too awfully long ago, they put new rotors on it, um, new pads. So pretty much all I gotta do is calipers and hoses and we're squared away. I don't wanna do all this work to this thing and then run into the back of a Prius when they brake stomp me. Well, got that done. New line on there. Uh, I recommend buying the best you can get. I got AC Delcos. They fit the best. Here's my new caliper. I also went ahead and threw on some good Wagner uh, brake pads. As soon as I saw that we had some Duralast, AKA Neverlast on there, even though they were new, decided to upgrade to a more suitable pad. So we're squared away on the front brakes on this side. Still gotta go to the other side and do that and then bleed them out, but it should be easy with everything being brand new and a new master cylinder. The master cylinder's already bled, so I'll feel a lot better driving it around now. All right, fellas, got both sides done. This is what come out of it. Nasty old crap. These were new, but I mean, just junk. And look at these old hoses. And this vehicle isn't even that old, but you'd be shocked how many, like, 40-year-old cars come into my shop here for work with uh, completely dry-rotted stock brake hoses on them. I mean, this stuff's rubber. It degrades quick. I mean, you just can't do that. Anyways, um, now we'll get on something else. My wife will have to, you know, on the brake pedal when she gets home. She doesn't know that yet. I'm sure she's going to be thrilled. She can sit up in the captain's chair there and bleed them out. So, I'm telling you fellas, if you like your ride in your life, just go ahead and change this stuff. It's cheap. I think these were like $45 a piece. The lines were like $15 a piece for AC Delcos. It's on Rock Auto, of course. But, And I've got exactly an hour and 12 minutes in this. So I've changed both calipers, both hoses, and the front brake pads. So hour and 10 minutes of my time this is well worth it hundred dollars of parts i've almost got it to the point where i can try to spin the engine and start it got a bunch of little small details put the coil wires on can hook up the uh vacuum booster um the main thing build battery cables i have like you've already seen 
main cable down to the starter. Most of the wires over here where they need to go. Alternator charge wire. Got the factory truck wiring for the ignition switch and stuff tied in, both to the alternator and the starter. Um, unfortunately, I can't put the belt on because I let my friend borrow my truck this morning and my belt's in the back seat. So, dead in the water there, but um, but I also don't have any fuel um, or hoses or anything like that. But I think I'm gonna build the battery cables and uh, just crack the ignition key, see if it'll spin, just engage the starter at least, see if we got that going. Um, that might also do a little cycle thing there. Um, make sure that that guy is powered up. Um, I can spin the engine. I am gonna put um, new oil filter in it. And then uh, I really want to just hear the thing light and then uh, after I get fuel, of course, but I want to hear the thing spin and fire before I put the radiator and all this junk back in it. Because as you recall, it's going to be like that and there ain't no room to get to anything, especially with the shroud and fan on it. So first thing we're going to do is finish building the cables, kind of button all this area up. I got to put a ground cable on probably somewhere on this casting, but um, I'm going to get all that out, start building my cable ends and stuff, and probably go ahead and put oil and stuff in it, put my plug wires on, and I'll bring you back when do something interesting. Well, hey, fellas. Oh, man. So it's time for me to crawl down under here and uh, see if there's any oil in this thing. I can't recall if I drained it or not. They probably pickled it at the uh, place when they pulled it, but I don't know. Don't want to go throwing a bunch of oil in there if it's already uh, empty or it's already got oil in it i mean also i can go ahead and uh looks like she's empty oh no not empty anyways i can go ahead and check all the uh starter cables and all that stuff make sure there's nothing up in the exhaust real hard unless we have a problem i'm not going to be back down here for a minute other than to do a leak check. Well, I don't think that was a full load of oil. I'm just gonna go ahead and let that drain out. Take a few minutes. I'll come over here, see if I can get this oil filter off. All right, let that drain for a few minutes. Well, unless you just want to sit here and watch this drip for five minutes, I'll go ahead and shut this off and uh, we'll uh, reconvene up top. Hey, fellas. Uh, so I got my little oil fill neck kind of rotated around enough I can get this in there. So I'm going to real carefully kind of pour off some of this Castrol GTX high mileage, my favorite oil brand. And uh, I run the high mileage in pretty much everything when I'm not running the shell Rotella. The new stuff I run the Castrol, the old stuff, the shell. Well, it's not pouring all over the place. Oh, and uh, a couple other things. You ever have a, a uh, time when you just uh, think of something a little late in the game? You know, something you should have thought about beforehand? Well, when I was putting this funnel in here, it occurred to me that uh, I had ju just done that, you know. I don't have my oil dipstick tube in this thing. I don't even know where it's at or if it was in good shape. I presume that it was. It should be over here, but it ain't. So, I'm glad I thought of that before I started the engine up. I have a, probably an oil leak that uh, I was a little curious about the whereabouts for a minute. Um, so I also got the plug wires in oil filters in uh, what else I've got all my battery cables built it's about six o'clock on a Saturday but I ain't going in the house until I see if this stupid thing will spin I don't have no gas so it won't start but 
I haven't spilt no oil on the floor yet. But I'm probably about to. The yellow sprayer? Yes. It's in the backyard, or no, it's over there on the boat. One of my, 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 my last sprinkler head exploded and the green water hose exploded when I was washing the boat this morning. Oh, so that wasn't the back of the bar? Nope. Can you cut it? No, it blew a big hole in it. All right. Now keep in mind, I still got to organize and wrap and stuff all this wiring, but I've got uh, my positive cables, everything hooked up there. I got a negative cable, but the one I have is a little bit too short. I want to go down there to that bolt there, like down around underneath. But it, the one I have is too short, so I just stuck one right there just for now. I'm not going to run the engine with it there. It's not going to hit the fan or, or the uh, belt or anything. On the subject of the belt, so the belt that's on there is about the third one I've got, and it's just barely. Um, long enough to pop it on there, but it's pulling the compressor down a little bit. Remember that stuff's kind of loose. So it's not tight enough, or uh, it's not right, so I can't run it that way. And I can't double check my alignment on my pulleys, you know, without the right size belt being on there. It needs to be at least an inch longer, inch and a half, and clock it up out of the way. Then I can make sure my pulleys are running true. This one is the one I have concerns about, but I left my... Uh, aluminum spacer a little long so I can shim it that or uh, shave it down you know to get that thing to move back if I need it to a lot better off leaving something too long you can always trim it up but I think we're to the point where we can hook this negative up and uh, see if any anything explodes keys off so I guess we'll touch it back on there Popped a tiny bit, but nothing out of the ordinary and no smoke. Nothing's on fire. Well, I'll set you up on the tripod in front and then I'll uh, bump that key and see if anything happens. Well, wish me luck. Cycle the key on, see if anything happens. Fuel pump might go to where it. Well, the windshield wipers came on. Cycle it back off. Your auto body did its thing. I'm going to hit the key. That's a win for Team Us. Hey dudes, well, it's uh, Sunday, the next day. Um, hopefully, today I'll find out if that junk runs, or don't, depending on whether or not I bought a bad engine. Uh, in that case, there's nothing I could do about it because the uh, salvage I bought it from is out of business now. So, got a few things to hook up on her. Um, I know the thing spins, I know the fuel pump primes, I picked up gas, uh, I also got the right belt, or well, I think it's going to be the right belt. Um, so I'll jump right in there and uh, fingers crossed, we'll hear this thing bark to life here shortly. Okay, maybe like all your fingers crossed, and yours too, and your toes. Well dudes, I'm getting real close. I've got uh, my heater core hoses on. Um, my belt is on. I was uh, turning this engine over, you know, just with the breaker bar, trying to see w what these pulleys were doing in the belt riding on them, you know. And uh, because this is so far from there and there, I was concerned, you know, with this distance, especially here, that with a smooth pulley that might walk. Now, my alignment was perfect, but my belt, about, you know, a quarter of a turn through the... Uh, um, spin of the engine would start to walk back 
and then it would just kind of slip back and it just it was just moving a little too much so i popped one of the idler pulleys well i guess it'd be the tensioner pulley from uh, the tensioner that used to be there and put it on there now the belts the smooth side of the belt is riding on the grooves but i've seen people do that quite a few times i'm going to see if i can find a smooth pulley that's guarded like this so the belt can't jump um, now spinning it over now it doesn't seem to have any problem so now what I'm trying to do is uh, figure out how to get my uh, throttle body my mass airflow sensor hooked up um, that big guy right there the big air filter assembly that mounts across the top of the radiator right here I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use that or not because it's kind of would kind of push into this potentially but for the sake of running it, the map is in the tune, so I have to plug it in. I'm, here's my connector right there. So what I done is I went down and bought a uh, four inch coupling, a spec tray. It's kind of more into the import crowd, I think. But anyways, and I pulled the sensor assembly off of the end of that. Sorry, I didn't mean to flip you off. So um, I pulled the clamp off of this guy right here, the the stock rubber piece that went, well, it didn't go onto that, but anyways, I pulled the metal clamp off and slipped this spec tray unit right over it. So I think this will work just fine, like so. Gives me room around the belt. So the, at least for the sake of starting it, it will all have everything it needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the clamp on, put that on where it needs to be. Don't want that to fall off. Anyways, I put gas in it. Um, battery is in it. Like you already know, we saw it spin yesterday. Um, all I have left to start it, other than putting this feller on there, is I've got to connect that guy and this guy. Basically just loop a section of hose around so we don't have a huge vacuum leak. Um, I put the dipstick tube in there. Actually, it worked perfect. I mean. It's not super easy to get to the, the checker, but I mean, it, it popped right in there super easy and that's stock for a 2011 Silverado. So I've checked my fluids, I put power steering fluid in it. So I'm gonna put this in and uh, put that little feather in there and uh, we'll see if this sucker will start. Well, fellas, I'm uh, man enough to admit I am nervous. I rarely buy engines that I've not heard run before. And the only reason I bought it was because it looked clean and I trust the people that I bought it from that they uh, aren't the type to screw people. But I've never heard it run and I'm honestly, I don't know if they have it either. So I'm just gonna hope for the best. I got the uh, battery hooked up. It's uh, Derek from uh, Vice Grip Garage. It's his favorite kind, it's got the little handle so he can throw them better. Anyways. This is this setup. Looks kind of goofy with these little wings on it, but got my sensor plugged in, got the belt on it, got it caged, got my transmission oil cooler line looped. Um, can't think of anything else it would need. Um, when I fire this thing up, I'm going to be looking for first, I have no oil pressure gauge, but I'm going to hopefully hear it build oil pressure pretty quick. Two, um, that there's no massive fuel leak three, that the charging system works, and I guess four, that it doesn't explode or I don't wet myself. But anyways, y'all wanna be up here to watch or underneath, or do you wanna watch from here? How about we just set you up like back here? Let's do that. I'll set you up real quick. Well, as uh, my dad would say, uh, I guess it's time to poop or get off the pot. It's one of his brilliant analogies there. Um, I'm gonna cycle the key. I should hear the fuel pump kick on, build pressure. I'll probably cycle the key a couple of times. Then we'll crank it, hope for the best. Um, it's probably gonna be pretty loud, so you're gonna lose. I'm not gonna be able to talk because it'll crank the volume down on my phone there, but see if the pump kicks on. It did. Throttle body cycles, so I know everything's getting power. ECM is controlling the fuel pump. We're showing almost 13, well, 12.5 volts. 
I'll cycle it one more time. Not spraying fuel anywhere yet. All right, let's hope for the best. That wasn't uh, very dramatic. I was hoping for more action. Pump's quieter now. Hey, it's a win! It did die, but... Try it again. I'm not hearing any rattling. My throttle pedal works. Officially the second time I started it. Uh, lit right off and uh, settled right into a smooth idle. So uh, I'm pretty much on cloud nine right now. Um, I just put a thin coat of radiator paint on that dude. And uh, I'm now to the point where I need to um, put the radiator in it, get the hoses figured out so I can get some coolant in it and actually let it run for a minute. And uh, put the fan in, shroud, and then button up the front clip, put all the lights and the grill and all that back in it. Um, I'm not gonna drive it until I get it to the exhaust shop, so I'm gonna pull it up on the trailer, haul it down the road to my buddy's, which is like 15 miles away, and uh, let him put some pipes on it. I've got some used mufflers, probably use that because I've got nine million other projects I need to spend money on, so I'm gonna do that, and uh, there should be after this episode, there should probably be one more episode on the LS swap build series. You'll see a lot more of the van, but as far as the LS swap goes, that'll pretty much put the wrap on that. Uh, as always, appreciate you watching.